Hey, everybody. Um, I know this is quite odd seeing me on camera because i am got a face for radio. But I've been working today on a client's PC, and something come up, and I think we really need to address it. I think we've overlooked something as a community, and I think the sooner we address it and the sooner we're on our toes about it, the more we can be prepared for it. And that is malware on Linux. Yes, it exists, and it is getting worse. That's what we're going to cover today on eBuzz Central. I'm in a client's office right now. He's actually out to lunch, and I wanted to do this video. It was on my mind, so I pulled my laptop out of my bag. So if the audio's off and the camera's not quite perfect, so be it. Like I said, this is the first time you're going to ever see me do a video like this. And we'll see what kind of feedback I get from this one. We'll see if we might do more in the future. But I think people need to understand that Linux, for one, is a coveted target. It's a host operating system for numerous application backends and servers and powers a wide variety of Internet of Things devices. Still, there's not enough done to protect those devices. Linux malware has been massively overlooked. That's my opinion. Since most of the cloud hosts run Linux, being able to compromise Linux-based platforms allows the attacker to access an enormous amount of resources or to inflict substantial damage through ransomware and wipers. In recent years, cyber criminals and nation-state actors have targeted Linux-based systems. The goal was often to infiltrate corporate or state-based or government networks. Uh, to, uh, to attack critical infrastructure. And what they do is they leverage weak authentication, unpatched vulnerabilities, and server misconfigurations to their advantage. Linux malware is becoming not just more prevalent, but also more diverse. Security companies have been looking at code uniqueness of malware strains to see how innovative the authors are. And what these companies have found is an increase in most malware categories in 2021 over 2020, including ransomware, banking trojans, and botnets. This increase in Linux targeting may be correlated to organizations increasingly moving into cloud environments, which frequently rely on Linux for their operation. And I also read the other day, I can't remember where it was, but there was a report that said the level of innovation of Linux malware came close to that of Windows. So basically what they're saying is the uniqueness of the code, the effort put into it, is starting to match that of Windows. Now you're probably asking, how can that be when not a lot of people are using Linux on their desktop? It's for the reasons I just stated. It's used for cloud infrastructure. It's used for banks. It's used for ATMs. It's, Linux is used so much worldwide that people just don't know or haven't heard about. And I think it's very important because as Linux malware continues to evolve, organizations need to pay attention to the most common attacks and harden their security for those attacks. While Linux can be more secure than other operating systems, it's important to note that an operating system is only secure as its weakest link. So if we don't stay up and these corporations don't stay up on it, and protecting it, there's going to be issues. After reading that article the other day, I did a lot of investigating. And here are the six things as a Linux user, even if you're just using it at home, these are the six things you need to look for. One, one of the major ransomware attacks right now is attacking VMware images. And what they call these is ransomware gangs that attack pre-made VMware images of operating systems or of applications you are launching in the cloud. These gangs, one was Conti, Darkseid, R-Evil. I think that was them. I'd have to double check. I should have made notes for this, but like I said, this is just all off the top of my head. So ransomware targeting virtual machine images. It's out there, they're doing it, and it's, uh, it's causing some havoc, quite honestly. Now, recently, groups like RansomX and Defray77 and Conti uh, began to target Linux host images used for workloads in virtualization environments. This one is new and it's worrisome because it shows just how attackers can go after the most valuable assets in the cloud and to inflict the maximum damage. Number two, crypto jacking is one of the most prevalent types of Linux malware because it can quickly produce money and people want to make money 
They can come up with a code, put it into Linux systems, and crypto jack that money. One of the first most notable attacks happened in 2018 with Tesla's public cloud, if you all don't remember that. They fell victim to it. The hackers infiltrated Tesla's Kubernetes console, which was not password protected. It wasn't password protected. Within one Kubernetes pod, access credentials were exposed to Tesla's uh, Amazon web service environment, which contained Amazon S3, and it was a bucket, and it had uh, telemetry saved in it, and it had sensitive data. But crypto jacking is on the rise. As a matter of fact, in 2021, it rose by 19 to 20% across the board. So that's one you got to look out for. Now, on the Internet of Thing devices, the three biggest ones you've got right now out there or X or DDoS, Mirai and Mozzie. The Internet of Things devices runs on Linux, with few exceptions and the simplicity of the devices can help turn them into potential victims. Mirai is a Linux Trojan that uses Telnet and SSH brute forcing attacks to compromise devices. It is seen as the common ancestor to many Linux DDoS malware strains. And once its source code was released in 2016, multiple variants emerged. In addition, malware authors learned from it and implemented Murray features into their own Trojans. So what they did is they took the Murray, created their own code wrapped around the source code, and then inflicted it into Trojans, and that's what they sent out in the world. So, gotta watch for those three malware families. Now the next, uh, world governments state-sponsored attacks targeting Linux environments. You as a home user probably don't have to worry about it, but it's out there. Uh, depending on what country might utilize this, I'm not going to say any countries because I don't want to be banned from YouTube, but it is out there, it is being used, and it's sponsored by the state. It's sponsored by the government to go out and do it. Now, if they want to do it on big cloud hosting platforms, they can, but they can also do it if you're using a Linux machine at home and you're worried about privacy and security, that's one you need to look out for as well. Next one is probably the most difficult to detect, and that's fileless attacks, okay? Basically what it is is uh, I was reading something from AT&T in their, their, what's it called? Alien Labs, I believe is what it's called. And they saw multiple actors, including Team TNT, and they started to use something called Azuri, which is an open source tool written in Golang. Attackers use Azuri to encrypt malicious code. On decryption, the payload is executed directly from memory without leaving any traces on the machine or on the disk, which makes these attacks difficult to detect by any antivirus software or malware software. So what that's basically doing is they wrap it in the code, you download it, it doesn't go to disk, it's run completely out of your RAM, and once it's ran, it's infiltrated your system and there's nothing left to show that it was ever there. So that's the one you gotta be, kinda be worried about yourself, is fileless. That's crazy. And then Linux malware infiltrating Windows machines. People will probably be like, what do you mean? Why would you wanna go that route? Because you do have the subsystem, Windows subsystem for Linux. So if you go in, you download or you receive one of these Linux designed attacks or malware that come into the system. If you've got the Windows subsystem for Linux on your Windows machine and it comes in through WSL, it could attack your Windows machine. So, I mean, that's just six examples, guys, of the way people are going after Linux machines. It's happening. Linux malware exists. It's on the rise, and it's something to look out for. Yes, you home users probably don't have to worry about it, but what I'm saying is it's better to know about everything now and be able to deal with it in the future as it is to just act like it's not there. Yes, Linux is more secure than Mac and Windows. We know this. But as a whole, if you take Linux as a whole, not just what you're using on your laptop, desktop, whatever, What's going on in the world out there with everybody that uses Linux to run businesses and cloud hosting and virtual environments and everything that's going on out there, there's going to be people that start targeting the home user. It's just inevitable. You know this. I know this. So I'm sorry I rambled on for a little while. Like I said, I got to face radio. I appreciate you all watching today. Um, but read up on it. Go out there. There's great articles about Linux malware. 
and kind of protect yourself. You don't have to put a bunch of antivirus crap on your Linux machine. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the threat is there. We need to keep our eyes open and watch it. We can't just turn our heads and act like it doesn't exist, that Linux is bulletproof, because at the end of the day, it's not. You know that, and I know that. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member right here on YouTube, buying us a cup of coffee, zipping over to PayPal, throwing us a donation, or go on over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.